what did you say? <laughs> I was saying what the, I, I didn't even see what trailer did you even put up? Uh, oh, the Dragon Ball Super superhero trailer they just came out with. Oh, is that the new uh, at the? Uh, uh, not the, the new anime, right? This is the. It's like a movie. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, is that their next? Oh, yeah, because they did say they they did announce a new one here. I remember that. So yeah. I thought I seen some screenshots of uh, Pan. Is there showing her training? But that was the actual kind of was that a teaser trailer? Or was that like a, kind of a full on trailer? I think it was more of a teaser trailer, but it was it was still a trailer in the sense that uh. <laughs> It was still a trailer in the sense that a lot of different stuff was given to us, and like it wasn't so so much. Oh uh, yeah. You know, we didn't really tell you anything about the movie. We just showed you there will be a movie. This actually has like some interesting stuff where you you can tell they've been like, well, hey, we think there's some plot here. We're giving you little tidbits of and. I don't know, it looks alright. It, it definitely actually looks really kiddish and, uh... Uh, God. It reminds me of, like, uh... Old Dragon Ball stuff, honestly. The way the hero-villain dynamic seems like it's gonna be set. But I don't know, we'll have to see. I just, uh, if we get, if we get more pen, that's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> right? I think that'll be cool. was always my favorite character from GT out of everything that they did out of it. And, uh, to I be did fair, all, she's I, like I did the like Omega Shinra. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, to be fair, there's probably only like two or three new, consistently new characters in GT where they like stick around and aren't like blown up three episodes after they're introduced. Um, and that basically is Pan, Omega Shenron, and then uh, who is the other villain of that arc? The, uh, the metal uh, baby. No, baby too. But, but uh, I was. Yeah, no, I was thinking Baby and then the uh, the metal dude, whatever, before, because it was like the space Dr. Jero, I was forgetting. But yeah, no, it was definitely that. So, like, there was it wasn't like Dragon Ball Z where you had a ton of options of, like, characters that kind of stuck around and were still options. To, but yeah, Vegeta and Piccolo and, like, all these people who were originally enemies just kind of, like, hung around until they were friends. And then in GT, you just literally killing dragons and alien robots. So it was just, it was definitely, you could, there were a, the, the, there are a lot of obvious differences between Z and GT. That's, that's for sure. But no, I think it's cool. I do think she's absolutely easily the best part of GT. Except for maybe, um, I forget what move is introduced in GT. I think it's the Rising Dragon, or can't uh, remember. I'm not too sure. I can't remember either. There, there is a specific okay. GT move Goku has that is like only used in GT. That is awesome. But and there's other stuff. Obviously, Omega Shenron is great. But I, I think it's just great to see that they haven't abandoned the straight up everything from the kind of GT timeline in a lot of ways. Obviously, she belonged in the Z timeline as well. But they, it does kind of look like they're pushing her to look and act the way she did in her GT appearance, so that should be cool. I think that's, that's, that's fine, yeah, so I think, yeah, she was always a fan favorite, so they were for sure, everyone's I'm pretty excited to have her back. I, I know that they always teased us with her, you know, as the baby pan, but now it looks like we're gonna, uh, from what I've seen, you know, teaser pictures that looks like kind of give them a little bit childlike pan that we got from GT. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll and that's, see. that's what I was seeing too. Is it looks like it's a little farther progressed, which I, I'm totally wondering how that's going to affect the story. I mean, it's Dragon Ball Z, so it's not. But it's cool to see the other characters grow alongside, right? And because if she's this much older, everybody else must be a little older, and things might have progressed in the background, right? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I definitely want to see if it's going to be its own very standalone thing, which I kind of feel like that's what it's going to be, is a Pan's Adventure kind of thing, where, like, you have it, and it is in GT, and you do have Goku and Vegeta, but it's really Pan's Adventure. And I, I'd be all right with that. Be okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they were teasing, like, Super Saiyan training for her, so... Yeah, so that, I don't... That would yeah. be cool. I, yeah, uh, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be really excited if this is more of her arc. <laughs> oh, yeah. Movie. I think it'll be interesting, and it's probably what GT should have been. Uh, 
which should have been like leave Goku at home, pick up Goten instead, and then it's Goten Trunks and Pan out on an adventure. Well, what maybe made... just like doing Goku Young was just like ah, oh, was another thing. It's like why are we going backwards? <laughs> they did that for nostalgia, absolutely. <laughs> but also, and then, like, yeah. I don't know, and then they, they, I don't know. It, it wasn't because go. I guess they kind of like. I guess they kind of were right. Was it should have been Pan and Trunks because they kind of did make Goku just kind of like you know that side little character. He wasn't well, really as powerful and, as he was until he got to Super Saiyan Four. Right, and then, and then he could just go straight him. back to adult form. Right, it, it and then it only long. lasted for so long. Right, it was only like thirty minutes. Or so. I can't even. Oh uh, yeah, it was, so it was. There was a right, and it wasn't that memorable. But the the, the important things that I do remember were. That Goku won, and it, it was the same thing from the problem with the Boo arc, right? Versus the Cell arc, which I'm not saying Boo wasn't a fun and good arc, but it was basically Cell arc too, in a, in a lot, a lot of ways. The way the villain worked, right? The plan for the villain being just kind of destruction and fighting and fun, doing what they wanted, um, and also to the point where like you had had that whole switch off between. Goku and, or you were supposed to have that switch off between Goku and uh, Gohan at the end of the Cell thing, right? Like, he's like, this is, now I'm handing it over to you and I'm leaving, and sayonara, so long, thanks for all the fish. But instead, what we really got was, uh, not that. We, we just got him back in Z. And then they had the opportunity to do it again at the end of Z, right? Where it's like, alright, Goku has had two full anime to full manga, right? Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Technically all Dragon Ball, but still. A good chunk of time to develop this character, advance, reach heights no one's ever reached before, right? Like, he's done it all. There's no new adventure or hill left to climb. At least at that point, you know what I mean? There were no characters outside of the realm of, like, who's around where we could be like, oh, yeah. And so, it would have been a good time to switch it over and be like, alright, now this is Pan's adventure with Trunks and maybe a third new person or just a random Z character. Throw Yamcha in there to be the old guy. Right? I'm just, I'm just saying, for characters who legitimately still have opportunities to explore their character development and changes, right? Like, Goku is not changing. We've had a lot of time for him to change a lot of opportunities and we've had him change a little bit over time but generally speaking Goku is the exact same character we met way back in uh, the mountains of Bolton I'm just being serious he's very up forthright he, you know what I mean he's thoughtless he likes to fight he, he hasn't changed he's the same character which is I'm not criticizing that I'm just saying we know after this time like he is not as a character going to change ever and as far as like fighting strength, he's basically gotten as far as reasonably possible in a in a good narrative storytelling uh, scope, right? Like any any stronger than this, and even at the levels of strength they're at now, it, like writing stories around it is just dumb, right? Like you can't fight on a planet when all of your punches destroy the universe. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that if, if all of your narrative goes out, like it's like boom, all right, well there goes the narrative. So, Anything I do basically destroys the universe. <laughs> and no offense, I'm just saying, just reach the end of the world. You need something from a new character, you know, you can't. Yeah, so I uh, I was hearing I guess that Vegeta kinda gets a little bit more of an arc from the from ma the manga side at least for his yeah. you know yeah. when he did that super Vegeta yeah. kinda look when he get all buff and everything. I guess they're doing the same thing but he's doing like the super uh, Vegeta blue version of it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I just re uh, I just re looked at it stuff here and there. I've never actually read any of the books, but uh, it looks like yeah, they're. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see where they're going with. Do you re have been reading the Dragon Ball Z? Uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, I read the manga. Uh, it's pretty good. I've been enjoying it. I'm probably like one or two chapters behind now because I remember we finished off the whole Moro thing and then we went into this. Movie. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's interesting. That's why I was wondering if the new season or movie or whatever was going to be Moro. He really would fit to a decent little movie chunk, as to maybe in the movie season. I think. We'll definitely have to see the other folks do. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm all excited for Dragon Ball. Yeah, it, it did really does. I it just hope that they, they, they up the animation <laughs> from the yeah. first, ah, first time. That season. trailer is a little rough. Tournament. 
And then just the tournament, you know, it's just like I think was also like kind of a way to save money because everything, you know, backdrop wise is the same. <laughs> I mean, clothing rocks in the background and stuff. But I, I'd say uh, yes if it weren't for the fact this is Dragon Ball Z and that's basically the entire story is tournaments in a lot of ways. Like even when it's not tournaments, it's like some weird form of tournaments where it's like, yeah, to get to Majin Buu, you gotta go through these levels of battling my minions. That seems an awful lot like a tournament. It's not a tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what I, they I, do with the next yeah. movie. And uh, yeah, other than yeah. that, um, I feel like there was another anime that was just supposed to be coming out this and that was announced. Uh, I know Demon Slayer had a new season coming, but that's not like Demon Slayer. Bas they're basically just doing the, uh, the train, yeah, Mugen tra uh, training arc. Um, which is totally fine. I'm, I'm you know, I sometimes they really add they add more information in, in this yeah. uh, series than they do in the movie. Which is, you know, I'll go ahead and watch it again because like they did that with the Dragon Ball yeah. uh, Z movie, and uh, there was more stuff that they did add on that you know. So, yeah. Okay, it's, it's worth watching it again just yeah. to see that. Although I think if you do it like that, you should do the the releases in the opposite direction, which is weird to say because then no one will watch it. Right? Like you have to do it the way they did it, and it makes sense monetarily. But like, I want to see the collection of them all, like, as a thing when I'm watching it the second time, not the first time where I was like, okay, I want all the little info, and then the second time I was like, alright, let's watch all the fights. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, but, uh, oh, you know what we did miss, though, that came out as a trailer, was uh, Sony is rebooting uh, Resident Evil. That trailer just dropped, I think, about two days ago. I, um, I did hear about that. I haven't seen it yet. Yet. Some people were complaining about the CGI, but, you know, it seems to be like they're going more toward the root of the game on this one. Yeah. Um, but it, it looks good. I mean, I'll watch it. Um, <laughs> the, Mala the Malaysian trailer actually did a much better <laughs> job of making me want to see the, the movie because I think it was that sounds, the, the sound uh, track choice on that first one, the US trailer that wasn't feeling for it. Uh, but the Malaysian ones, they got it just right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I, I seem a little excited for this. It, it seems like a very good popcorn zombie flick movie. I'll go watch it. Um, and then, you know, like crazy uh, mutated zombies as well, too. You know, we don't, it's, uh, that's also cool. So <laughs> we'll yeah, check yeah. that out. Um, got, we get zombie dogs. So uh, a new version of zombie dogs. Um, but yeah, other than that, that looked cool. Um, I know that we did get some photo shots of the new Willy Wonka movie that's supposed to be coming out, but it's supposed to be a prequel. Um, I think I his uh, estate is, oh, no, is something. Somebody bought it. Who was it? Warner Brothers, I think, just bought his estate. Mm. Um, so yeah, they're, 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 that's their next project is doing a prequel for his uh, the Willy Wonka stuff. <laughs> that's interesting because I can't remember. I used I had read all of the Roald Dahl books at one point, and I can't remember if there's a prequel in the book series. I know there's at least two sequels to the Chocolate Factory, which is Glass Elevator, and then um, yeah, I guess it's just they're going off of their own things because it guess might be yeah uh, new. We own we own we own it now. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> so I mean. We, uh, we um, so Honestly, another yeah, thing under Warner Wonka Brothers Wonka. umbrella is uh, the Willy Wonka series. <laughs> but yeah, well, I don't know when that's supposed to be coming out. Probably, oh, it, they're saying it's supposed to be coming out March 2023. So we got quite a while before we see that. I was expe I was actually expecting a next year date, but with the way they, you know, push out movies nowadays, like Man, they, no they shit. film in a year and they're like, done. It's, not, done. it's out next year. <laughs> the special effects started working on it before anybody hit the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, we won't be seeing that for quite a while then but yeah um, uh, we'll see what that's going to be um, I, I didn't really read through the whole thing um, You, if you guys want to check it out there's probably already kind of a synopsis about what they're kind of going on what the story was going to be about oh um, yeah but, but a... I, I don't know, we'll see I mean the origin story I guess that's all we can say right <laughs> I, cool. I think yeah which they kind of had, it, which is interesting because they had kind of hinted at that in um, Burton's chocolate Charlie and the Chocolate Factory oh did they okay yeah I, you, that, know, and you I remember they like had his... like the flashback and his dad was like a dentist and he had this oh, big yeah, that's true, and that's he true. could only eat like the really bad candies 
Yeah, I never liked Tim Burton's you version know, of Black Factory. I, I don't know why. I think I, it's just more whimsical to me than his version of, you know, with the way he does stuff, which is fine. I actually he think does it's more dark whimsical to me. Yeah, I was going to say, he does dark. He, th- I think that's why I didn't like it as much as the original one. To, for two reasons. One, it was going to be impossible uh, to beat the... Uh, God damn it, who played him in the original? Uh, um... Now you're making me forget because I just watched the movie with you. I the know. Other day. I watched. I uh, starts with the G. Gene Wilder, right? Yeah, there we go. Gene Wilder. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing actor. Uh, I love. I love him in every movie he does with the. Uh... God damn it! He's always doing. He has a couple of them with one of the comedians at the time, and I can never remember. Oh, it's um, Richard Pryor. Yeah, yes, like Pryor. Those ones. They, they did <laughs> some, some really fucking funny ones. They're really great together. But I don't think anybody could top his Charlie. I, 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 or not Charlie, his uh, Willy Wonka. I honestly don't think there's anybody that could... Ca- like, he, for me, Gene Wilder captured the essence of what I remember Willy Wonka kind of being like in the book, which was this genuinely whimsical kind of crazy guy with a very, like, kind of, like off left streak right where if you push him too far he just goes ah! <laughs> and it, which is fine that's that was exactly how i saw it whereas like you said uh burton's ones were very dark and it was more like really Willy Wonka cool. was yeah Coogie, he was in his own world and like you know even and and funny thing is that if you were go if you were to go actually i think line by line uh, dialogue wise and scene wise i actually think burton's is more accurate by by pure dialogue and scenery choice like how they depict people being like puffed up or like certain um, however i don't think spirit wise it it really yeah. captures the essence plus that, there's same. Once again, the, the old Charlie and Chocolate Factory was a classic, not just because of Gene Wilder, but it had some amazing filmography and stuff. I mean, the I whole mean, under... The, the uh, spores were pretty good, too, as well. I oh, like yeah, 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 things. absolutely. I mean, everything about I the movie. I usually don't like well musical movies too much, but um, that, that, one, that one was very well done to me because it was kind of funny at times, even when the, the grandpas and yeah. the grandma would do a song. They, they were good. It was all good. I liked yeah. the act. You said everything was done well on that. It was. Um, it was it was a well done movie in general. I think the best example of how you could tell that movie is well done is the uh, the under the tunnel scene, which oh, is in yeah. itself an iconic movie. But you thing, know, right? I remember watching that. And that really did give me nightmares. It didn't. No, like it's that. it's freak <laughs> thing. It's fucking freaky, and it's supposed to be because it is in the book too. The way he describes it is this really disturbing tunnel, like that just goes by, and you're like losing your mind. And like in the book, I think that was the description is like while you were going through this is you're causing you to question your sanity and like lose grips with reality and then suddenly you're at the end of the tunnel and you're all good it was it's such a it was like i think it was supposed to be Roald Dahl's like interpretation of a uh roller coaster okay but i don't i don't remember exactly any of that I, i'm just going off of like half-baked memories that i might be mixing up with any other series i'd read but no, like uh, definitely really funny, really good. I'm interested to see what they do with the new one. Um, yeah, like I said, we'll I definitely have yeah, to see. yeah, I actually like I said I like the the newer one not as much as the old one, but I did like it because it was dark and I like that kind of style of comedy in certain uh, cases. I like that. Uh, the other thing is I think uh, Tim Burton just has a very visually appealing style for me. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. like he has a, and a very unique style. So like it, it was it was an interesting watch. Uh, definitely not like a go back and watch a ton kind of movie, but no. you know, I, I give it like a six, six or maybe six point five. Sun likes that one too, and I was I'm like, no, this was the other one. No, I, and like, <laughs> given the choice, given the choice, I will always choose to watch the other one. It's not like because the other one scores like a solid nine, maybe a nine point five for me. Cause it's just a good movie. Um, yeah, for any time, any day. But I, I, I do think that uh, I, it's funny. I think that the Willy Wonka movie, the second one, Tim Burton's one, suffers from the same problem we've talked about, which is that comparison of medium where it's like if you weren't comparing it to the book or the old Willy Wonka one, it might be what, what, a little better. better. 
Yeah. Some well, people just, would have been like, some people, yeah, would have enjoyed their marriage maybe even more, been like, yeah, this is actually pretty good. This is, you know, because right. they have, not, yeah, like I said, they have nothing else to really compare right. it to and besides not, the book. Yeah, and not <laughs> saying that it would have been better than the original and, or anything like that, just that people's opinions of something, right, are colored by All the fact that, a yeah. little bit more towards the, the old one, yeah. Yeah. That one, yeah. Or just, you know, the one you like, right? Like, and don't get me wrong, that's, that's not... out it. I'm, you know, <laughs> which I get. I mean, it, my problem is I don't think we'd be so nervous about them doing it all the time if they didn't constantly screw it up, right? That's like another they, thing. Sometimes I think it's the... Which is true, you know? Sometimes people do, you know, call it out as it is. It's a money grab, and... Mm-hmm. But if you're going to do a good job, okay, then we might not say that because it'll be like, okay, that was, you guys really were, the director really wanted to come out and say, I want to do a really good interpretation or just a new remake of a yeah. modern generation Willy Wonka or, you know, just any, any yeah, other. Any, yeah, uh, I think a good example is the Chucky remake when we went like high tech digital. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was so was different, good. but it was very much so in the line of what Chucky was supposed to be. It was still well made. You could tell they put effort and thought into it, and I think that's important. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, so much. So now much. that you're saying Chucky, I don't know if we talked about it, but yeah, the, this month is also the Chucky series that will yes. be coming out, I think, on the 12th, so that should be, when is that? Oh, two days, so that should be on a Tuesday, I think? Holy yeah, shit, Tuesday. I just noticed, yeah, it's the 10th, so uh, speaking of, I want to bring it up uh, because it is Halloween. And it was one of those classic ones, but the twelfth is also the release of Back for Blood. Oh, which, nice! Oh, that's all. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, and so for any, I, I'm sure as you remembers, but for anyone watching at home or on YouTube and stuff, Back for Blood is the uh, Left for Dead team's new zombie game. That's basically their continuation of their Left for Dead series in a lot of ways. Uh, but just, I think they, I can't remember if they had to switch studios or licenses or whatever. What the reasoning was, I just know that I, this is where they're at now, and this is that team who made the original Left 4 Dead games, so. Right. Yeah, that, that'll be fun. I, I did enjoy the, the little beta that they had going on with it, yeah. so that, it'll be fun. I'll, I'll talk to see if I can pick that up. Uh, one that I'm trying to get first, though, is uh, I want to try that new Metroid game. I it heard looks a lot. good. Oh, I actually liked it, and the reviews are coming out pretty good that... It's a good game, so yeah. And then I've never played a Metroid game before, so I've always wanted to oh, check yeah. it out. So we'll uh, pick it on the Switch. I did have a pre-order for one of those new uh, Nintendos, but I said, let's wait on it because <laughs> uh, I, I did see one in person. It is really nice, like the the OLED screen. I'm the, sure the, it looks you know, amazing. Yeah. Up. The the way bigger screen on it was much 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 nicer. But that's honestly the only thing that was you know. The upgrade on it like i don't know if it really because i have my own switch but i didn't know if it like would give me the, you know the push to really upgrade my switch that i have now because that's really the only thing that was making me want to go was the bigger screen and then the old led screen was making like i said yeah the I, I could better, see but, and one well, saying... a lot better oh yeah they, they... <laughs> Yeah, but, but weren't they already it's... selling really cheap little ones you could buy online anyway for people to do that like custom oh, made probably, yeah. yeah yeah but, definitely but this one was like an actual legit one and you can actually fold it up even higher lower so that's what was that's another. the other one was just the one loop that's it one position only yeah but um that was pretty much it you know i, I um it doesn't it doesn't do 4k gaming it doesn't do it does the same you know as it when it's docked i think it only, you can only go up to 1080p uh, 30 maybe frames per second. I don't think it can handle the 60 frames, but um, so yeah, 1080p 30 frames. Maybe there's 1080p 60 frames, and then uh, 70, uh, 720, and then 30 frames. Or maybe it's I can't. I have to look into. It. I can't remember the yeah. exact. Maybe it's 30 frames all the way docked and undocked all the way through. It might be locked. Might um, be. My my but thing is that, 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 that was that's really the big the three biggest differences to me. <laughs> my thing is it's always a relative thing of like price versus uh, nice, right? Like whatever you get versus how much extra it costs and how that affects the market. So like something like that, I'd be willing to pay probably like an extra fifty bucks. Which it, yeah, that's what it was. It was an extra yeah. fifty dollars. But like I said, but, if you're already only. One, yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. That I would want to say, but only if I didn't already have one, because I didn't. I won't want to buy a whole new one for a slight increase in screen size and a and a good, you know, an increase in uh, yeah, quality. exactly. And so I, I can and, see how it would be rough. Yeah, 
And if if anybody is really hesitant on upgrading or if you're waiting for Nintendo, like they've already kind of pretty much confirmed there is not going to be like another pro pro version of this. Like they're pretty much, they said, done for quite a bit from upgrading. Well, so. they, they seem like they got it worked out, so it's not like it's bugged out or anything. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, so, but there there was some leaks out there saying that they were going to have like a pro version of it. And they were like, no, there's no. Just this one, guys, for for quite a bit. Maybe for oh, another two years till they come up with their the next version. <laughs> till the but, next uh, consoles come out. <laughs> no, we still got another like six years for that, I think. Because when did the last ones come out? Nineteen, right? Two thousand nineteen or twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah, last year they were, uh, and then um, some people are still struggling. But I actually I seen a was... couple people get some PS 5s so they have Best Buy. So I mean, you, like can, you can you can get, get them. Little, little it's just. It, it, you can get them, it's just usually A, expensive, or B, takes a really long time. You know, got to actually pay attention to when the lists are open and make sure you get your name in there and, you know. And just online is a headache, too, you know, just yeah. add the cart errors. and At, the, at that, out. I honestly think in-person would be the way to go for that kind of and stuff. That's, like, and, that, and see, that's the thing that was sucking for a little bit when the uh, 5 and all those came out. No in-store uh, pickups or anything for at least... I think they started doing that this summer. They were started doing in-store pickup orders finally. Yeah. Uh, but it, it took so long. Yeah, it was only online orders, and uh, even then, like if it was in-store pickup, you had to. Uh, it was only like a few consoles that maybe be in the store, and every it would still be mostly online. <laughs> and then they they would every store retailer would come out with some try the better system, but never really works or. It always gets you know clogged or frozen or messes up for everyone errors out so yeah it, um it was, yeah just has still kind of i know some headaches for some people out there for sure still yeah can't get a five <laughs> well hopefully uh, it still gets... them still, but hopefully yeah. i say yeah it gets easier yeah i think it will over time because once again the the i think a big part of the problem is um like an avalanche effect of like, all right, things are going bad in certain places and because it's tough here it gets tough here 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 all the way down because uh, we had talked about how all levels of things are, like, suffering from different issues, such as, yeah. like, whether it was from COVID or, like, lack of works, getting people to, like, un unload ships, getting people to, right, like, right. getting all these... Yeah, yeah, well now. yeah. Well, and metal stuff for that because of repairs, because of not maintenancing these ships for 50 years, uh, because of the fact that these multi-million dollar ships were never actually a viable recurring medium of transportation same with trucks it's a cool idea and it's a good short-term solution to a long-term problem of transporting lots of big items uh, long distances but realistically well even beyond finding somebody to do it once again right not having ships or having trucks that are serviced and in in use because you have to run them so often and so hard and it really is such a big expense whereas you know Realistically, you probably should have built underground railroads everywhere a long time ago. Um, you know, like, I'm just saying, if you had a bullet train everywhere, it, yes, trains are still rough in the same way like that, but it's a recurring path. You got one train, you can swap in cars a lot, and uh, it's a little more, but, and that's what, what I'm saying is, like, even that is just, like, a, one of those things that, I guess the big point is like there's always something going wrong on the way you know what i mean that's why transport and being a merchant has always been kind of hard right right well and um well i was gonna go into more of the spooky season here Ooh, uh yeah. I, did, I did not know that this well actually maybe i did hear about this but i didn't think it was actually gonna happen that they're coming out with another par paranormal activity i don't know if this is considered a reboot <laughs> or um can you no, read? Cool. I guess they because did. Yeah. the title is called Paranormal Activity Next of Kin, but they're going away from the kind of found footage. You can tell, like you have to look up the trailer, but you could definitely tell they're not going. There's a couple of scenes where it kind of looks almost found footage, but you could tell it's a little bit more high produced. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit different movie than people are uh, come to recognize, where it's just one scene and we just wait there for. <laughs> for you know the sheets to move or something like that but uh, definitely seems like a different kind of paranormal activity that they're going in with this um with a little like i said sprinkle of the original originals in there <laughs> i don't mind that because i think one i think we kind of ran 
paranormal activity into the ground the same way that we actually basically like we ran uh, Freddy and Michael into the ground and Jason into the ground, but like at ten times speed because it was made in the new age. Hopefully we, we get some more Jason and Freddy's. I know those ones are still. They're in, gonna uh, come. Yeah, they're. The it, those are in. Yeah, those are inevitable. They're just waiting for money issues to be resolved by dumb people. I think it was because the uh, they were up for um, sale or um, re. Oh yeah, right. I think we right because I think that's what happened. Yeah, I think I they were know. up for sale again, and then the original creators came in, you know, trying to fight back for the rights on it. But. Um, and I, that, I, yeah, and I get it. I'm all for original creator rights kind of stuff. And but I'm also, you know, there's a line right um, where if you sell somebody something, like at a certain point, it's got to be theirs because you sold it to them. Right. That's that's just, that's what Marvel's doing right now. I just see that they're suing the the creators <laughs> and Steve Ditko as a family was trying to uh, also now trying to come back for the right. I think they said they were trying to I think, and that's the thing the way they the news frames it I think is really misleading they they are always saying uh, Marvel tries to but the truth is it's actually cap pretty much the other way around the, the people know that those rights don't actually revert because they were signed over contractually to Marvel well, that's what they were saying yeah that they were under uh, contract for those hire hire for work is what they would say. yeah uh, absolutely um, and Marvel has always been that way it's literally why uh, they lost uh, Ditko no I can't remember they, they lost a bunch of artists because of that that's not new that's that's not uh, news and they've basically been doing it since their, they started public publication uh, I can't even think of an exception to that rule, where Marvel was it, it like. It kind of makes sense in their way too, you know, because they're trying to create a brand and well, how can you create yeah. a brand when all your characters are moving going universes. To... Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the best example, as much as I think McFarlane is like the breakout example of how to be an independent comic book creator and like producer, in just every sense of the word, whether that be from comics to collectibles, etc., like. If you wanted to figure out how to do it on your own, watch how Todd McFarlane did it. He did it right. Um, the, yeah. w- the one thing I think that he did that is rough for him, still an awesome, cool like idea for him to do, and I think it's great for artists, but is a little rough for his universe, is that he does let his artists keep all of their uh, rights to their character, which means that if they leave, they get to take their character with them, right? Which is exactly what happened to uh, Angela. Yeah, that one was a weird one. That one yeah, was. It uh, was, and I'm I'm not like I said I'm not necessarily criticizing <laughs> that the choice to do that. I'm just saying that's exactly kind of what happens there. Yeah, and yeah. So um, you well, know, he, it's just well, something to think through. I think who was it? Was it Grant Morrison that had done the work with that with him? So he, I think he yeah. got the rights for it, and then after that, then he's like, I don't want it no more, and then he sold it to Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was an interesting um, weird one. So like, yeah, I, I'm not sure. No game in. It is no game in. It's I can't definitely remember. somebody. <laughs> it was one of the I, other big guys around that time. Maybe even Mark. Nah, it wouldn't have been Mark Miller. I can't remember exactly who it was. Um, I know Dave. Uh, Dave, I can't say the last name. But Dave Michelin, Michelin, but uh, McShallen. <laughs> yeah, he had uh, came out a, just a couple days. Uh, kind of criticizing because the Venom movie came out right and um, he gets you know a little upset because he doesn't get as much credit as you know be creating the Venom creator as uh, Todd does which I can kind of see too a little bit but then <laughs> like you have to look it up but Eric Larson also came up and said you know well um, you have to read the whole conversation but what ended up happening is that because he had created basically the uh kind of the suit you know for the character the, yeah the spider-man character and so because of that then when that spawns out of that it spawned out of he had the idea of creating a venom character and actually he was one of the ones that said it should be female um but then the stu- uh, marvel had kind of pulled his hands and you know said hey can we make a, a male character and so he you know he made it male and so um yeah, so he, I guess he just feels a little upset. Sometimes he doesn't get all the credit sometimes, too, for helping a little bit on that Venom creation. <laughs> no, no, no I, and I get that because that's tef- definitely a Marvel thing. <laughs> to like, They're super... And once again, I think that's something they need to... that 
as much as people are harm, harshful for Marvel, right? Oh, that Marvel's not shy about this. Marvel is not pulling punches. Marvel is not lying to people. Marvel tells you when you come in, your shit is ours, and we're gonna change it how we see fit to fit our universe and our take on the universe. And at the end of the day, that also means that we might not give you credit for some stuff because we're making these big editorial changes. And I think that's important as well, is that um, that people want um, credit for the good shit, right? But they don't take credit for the bad shit that goes along with a lot of characters, like the really shitty designs. All right, so for example, right, X-Men are amazing characters, cool characters, awesome that Stan Lee and, and Nico made them, but they're actually garbage for about the first 10 years of their production. Like, until Claremont gets a hold of X-Men, X-Men comics are basically unreadable. They're, they're yeah, they, so nah, they were bad. good. Yeah, like I said, they were good at the beginning, and then, like I said, yeah, probably after that, they died off. And, and, it, and once again, there's no offense, but I, you, you got to take credit for both of those, right? You can't give them credit for the X-Men being an amazing conceptual idea, but not give them the shit credit for being like, yeah, but you also wrote it for 10 years and didn't write a single decent story. Not as, I'm being harsh, right? I'm being super harsh. They're okay. But they're nowhere near the level of what you expect an X-Men comic or comic books in general to be now after they were defined, redefined in the age of Claremont. Um, so it's, it's, you gotta go both ways, right? Like, you can, um, you can't take credit for the good stuff about Spider-Man without also admitting some of the weird, like, stuff like the fact that half of his I, like I remember someone made a joke one where it was a uh, Spider-Man or it wasn't a joke one but it was a, a Marvel comic joke one where they were it was Spider-Man talking to a spider that Doctor oh, Strange had met yeah. yeah I think you've seen this one too and he's yeah. just like well, what are your powers again uh, I can sense danger coming well that's weird I can't do that and uh, I can also do this I don't know. You sound more like a magic man. Are you sure you're not a ra radioactive magician or written by a radio? He's like, you don't sound like a spider. Do you, do you liquefy your victims and drink their innards? No, it's like, it's okay. We, <laughs> we all have identity crises. <laughs> no, and, and so I think it's really interesting. And once again, not taking any credit away either because I do think Todd McFarlane is easily one of the greatest uh, comic book like writers and creators. Uh, I, I think sometimes his dialogue needs a little work. That's my big sometimes quick yeah. with him. But I but his some good stories though, yeah. Oh yeah, his stories, his character and universe creation, really good. His implementation, everything about him, he's pretty much an A plus writer. Um, which is why he was able to go off on his own and do those kind of really big moves to make image and everything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, th there's definitely something to be said about the differences of, like, universe building, right? So, like, Marvel and DC do kind of treat their artists like interchangeable cogs. But, unfortunately, that's because for Marvel and DC's purposes, they are interchangeable cogs. Like, Marvel and DC, right, is not about any one character or any one specific, well, maybe with the exception of, like, Spider-Man, you know. Right. It's all about Spider-Man. But with the exception of that, you know, it's about, all right, who's big this week? What's the best story we can tell? How do you throw it in there? And who's going to work on this story the best? Like, whether it be Hickman or whatever. Because even, I think, like, Hickman's off X-Men now, right? And I don't even know if he finished telling the his story or not. Inferno is uh, supposed to be his last... Uh, yeah, yeah. Which I guess he got two years, so that's a pretty good time. So. Yeah, he said... That, I think he did believe that he did have a little bit more, but I... He was kind of pretty much done. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. You know, off, oh, you know what? Uh, you know what? It really happened was he said that was because it was getting hard to kind of tell people, you know, hey, this is how you should do that book, or that's how you should do that book, or so he, he said it was getting more difficult and more difficult to do that because people weren't, you know, really kind of wanting to do that. <laughs> Basically, so, nobody was wanting to listen to what to his master plan. Yeah, so, yeah, I get they it. were like, yeah, so yeah, makes sense, you know, you always come with, you know, butt heads with writers. And it's they, and it, the that's the thing doesn't always work together. <laughs> right, and that's and that's the other thing I always have to like put out there is like, once again, this is and that's what I mean is like Marvel really is a collaboration of. Stuff same with DC, right? It's 
it's a collection. It's not a singular title in a uh, volume of collections, right? Which is really more of what stuff like Boom and the newer comics studios are. Not always. Some of them do have very good interconnecting stories. Um, but a lot of them are just like, hey, we have these artists and they want to tell stories of their own that don't have to be connected and don't have to tie into a giant universe that's pre-established and follow these rules and, and not kill so-and-so because if you kill so-and-so, there goes the money maker. Um, and I think that's cool. I think that you need I, you need that, right? Those, like, right. those, which is what manga are for. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Spe- speaking of, a lot of great stuff coming up in manga and anime as well. Um, really nice. Cute. Well, I want to, I guess, just go over a little bit of some other things here. And because uh, I'm about to end a little bit here, short here today. No worries. Um, we're, we're, we did a pretty decent time anyway, so it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, my bad. No, it's fine. Um, I guess, uh, which was, uh, I guess there was rumors about this, but a lot of people were correct about um, Rockstar coming out with the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition coming out. Um, which I know a lot of people have been wanting for like oh, quite a bit for a while now, so Here's... it's coming now. Here's the thing I wonder, and they absolutely have. I know people are going to play this just for the San Andreas re- reconfig, which hopefully will be good, because if they're making yeah. a definitive, they better be remastering a lot of the games into more either visually or operationally higher coding, because otherwise they're probably going to get some flack. My question is, for the people who are super hyped about that, are there more people who are super hyped about that or more people who are still pissed waiting for GTA 6 like me? I'm just curious. I don't know the numbers, but I could say this. GTA anything... 6, come out, Andre. It's never coming out. <laughs> Dude, our kids, no. our kids will play GTA 6. That's it's okay. It. Our kids that's will play that's GTA who's gonna play it. 6. That's just going to play. It you won't be the whole then, fucking world. By then, you won't even be able to play it. Your hands are going to be too yeah. fragile. So <laughs> no, it's okay. Be... It'll be VR. It's going to be VR. <laughs> it's going to be just like uh, blips and chips. You're just gonna go on and put the helmet on and go live a whole. I am there for. You're in a... <laughs> ten minutes. My whole life flashed before my. Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the machine is smoking. Uh, where are my kids? Oh my god. I was buried in there for. <laughs> He's yeah. like, wow. I I yeah, smelled yeah, the yeah, ground. The <laughs> Yeah, your your life was really boring, and shitty. I'm sorry. <laughs> you had a heart attack and went back to the carpet. St- <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, um, no room yeah, on that, but yeah, episode. that was that is and and it is funny, like I said. And once again, I don't want to act all pissy about it, but I do think I I think Rockstar has signed a lot of checks that it has not been able to cash in the last couple years. Um. Even beyond the uh, the um, GTA 6 stuff, right? I feel like there was a little bit of here and up and down. Like they did really good on Red Dead 2, and aside from that, I really can't think oh, of really, like, the Red Dead. Red, yeah, uh, Red Dead really. 2 was great, which and I think it was really a good like holdover because it made us really hopeful for GTA and getting this really big war. Because I mean, Red Dead was pretty fucking big. It was. Um... Vicious, yeah, there was a lot of... Well, just yeah. land size-wise, I mean, the map itself was a fair... Not, nothing, like, it wasn't, like, the biggest map ever made. But as no, far no, as no. high-level graphics mixed with detailed gameplay... Yeah, that's and, not, yeah, it's not yeah, just all absolutely. that into being a big open-world game. Like, yeah. It was almost like Skyrim-type, you know, kind of level when we first got that. You know, that was something that was very amazing and big and different and huge. Like, we never had a big world like that before. And no, absolutely. And it was... Much, you know, going on in the world as well. <laughs> Although, I will say that much in the way that GTA did Skyrim kind of pimped the hell out of that idea. <sighs> but hey, we knew they would. Because they've made, like, six yeah. remakes. And it's like... <laughs> it's yeah, been, it's they, been remade on one. every console. It's been remade in every graphics generation. Like... I don't know what else they can do to remake it. Like the next, they they and that, that's not mentioning all the mods and shit that have been put on. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's cool. Uh, we'll have to see how those long-standing games evolve if we ever get Skyrim Two or GTA Six or 
Well, I, I know we're supposed to be wait. They're still waiting for Elder Scrolls. What was yeah. the, the one uh, was supposed to be coming out? Yeah, and that, that one. Uh, that one's been kind of on hold for a while. Uh, we just haven't heard anything. <laughs> yeah, just remember we heard they showed us the title, and it was that was it. You know, wasn't there? <laughs> you know, what was coming out? I didn't hear news of. I can't remember if we talked about it. Wasn't there another Saints Row coming out? Oh yeah, there's another Saints Row coming out, but it's a um, yeah. Check out the trailer, but it's a little bit more serious than the more. They're getting away from the. You know, it's funny. Saints Row is involved so like weirdly. Like it started off as being like this GTA kind of knockoff. Like you know, you're these purple gang or the blue gang. Or yeah. And all that, and then then it ends up being like okay, now we're kind of being like still gangs, but like it's like really with like outrageous weapons and yeah like, it was just crazy and it was like, were, like the next team was like we're gonna take that and we just we're gonna make those outrageous weapons and make it even 10 times worse and then just we, make you know what? everything just outrageous. aliens in there now <laughs> <laughs> they did and and i'll tell you what it worked it worked for them they did well a lot of people like those games it played well it no, sold well the dubstep gum was probably one of my favorite things so fucking funny too i mean let's be honest at a time when dubstep was hitting the scene so hard that you could not find it everywhere that was a fucking funny gun to put in a game um but other than that uh that's pretty much i, I think about how they say oh and i guess if I, before we go off i don't know let's see oh yeah we off. yeah we did have to show it off but, it should um, show off it was working out pretty good earlier it's a little, but little fiddly, the, but there's this, there's the sentinel. Let's see, yeah, there he is, right there. Yeah, he yeah. So he's, good. he's there's a, uh, you can Six. see right there. There's rogue and his end and I'll kind of flip her. There you go. Oh, there yeah, we go. That, that, that's a six-inch figure in her, his hand. So yeah, yeah. This is pretty cool. big. This is, uh, Haslabs, uh, or Hasbro's uh, Haslab, they call it. It's like their cool, their Kickstarter things where, you know, they um, if they get enough people to do it, then they'll go ahead and make this uh, project that they have in mind. Uh, but I think he's supposed to be 23 inches tall or 26. He may be 26 inches tall. Uh, but yeah, he's a big boy. <laughs> he's a big boy. I mean, if he's holding uh, a six-inch figure in his hand, he's a big boy. Uh, it looked good. You, you know what we could do maybe one of these days is get those together for a nice little shoot. I think that would be nice for the, the yeah, page of the channel. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so uh, we'll definitely do. Oh, and then he lights up too. It's pretty nice. cool. Yeah, should that's that dope. <laughs> yeah, he, he changes his colors uh, to like yellow, red, blue, and I think like a green color too as well. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. We, um, he's a, got some articulation there. Um, it's kind of just like a big, huge diorama action figure piece. It's <laughs> almost, but. Uh, they they do have another one that they're uh, already closed up. Um, so if you guys were doing wanting to join the next one, that one unfortunately did close for them. But it was supposed to be Galactus, and he's gonna be I think like 32 inches tall. <laughs> um, so yeah, he'll be much more massive than the Sentinel guy. Uh, but yeah, can't wait to get him, and we get some other cool extra. Um, gal or, well, what is this? Uh, Heralds that we'll be getting. We get a yeah yeah Frank Frankie Nova, Silver Surfer. Um, what was the other one? Um, it was I one I've never actually heard yeah, of. Yeah, there it was a very, very person. rare one. Yeah. It was, um, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll get that one, and uh, just uh, yeah, always look. They do actually. Actually, there's one ending here in the next hour. If you guys want, if you're into Transformers, but they're doing the Victory Saber. I think is what it was called. Um, but it's literally like I think five Transformers or four Transformers, and they combine <laughs> <to make laughs> into the sword. Chart. Yeah, into like this Sword. big giant uh, base or ship, I think, and then um, comes with like some blaster effects. <laughs> comes with like a stand piece, so you can make it look like he's flying. Nice. Um, yeah, so they come with some cool things in that. But uh, yeah, uh, check it out. I mean, all these toy companies are starting to do these now. I know Mattel has one that they just did. They did one for a wrestling one. Um, and then yeah, they got the Haslab ones. The oh, the next one that uh, if you guys want to bring the Star Wars stuff, the uh, Rancor is going to be coming as a Haslab for the Star Wars Black series. So if you guys do collect the six-inch figures, they're going to be doing a Rancor two size of the six-inch figure line. That'll be pretty uh, cool. So yeah, you can have if you guys have Luke, you can have your little Luke battling uh, a Rancor now. <laughs> 
I do love the, the sets. The, the fact they do sets now is great, because back in the day, you used to get one giant thing, and it had nothing to go really with it. Like, whatever came with it was what came with it. Right. But now they make well, things in, like, big sets. Not even like, that, but, like, even, like, there's even all these other companies that you can just go to that, like, third-party companies that build sets for you now, and you can just, like, uh, I've seen them. They're pretty cool. There's this one that's called Extreme Sets. <laughs> And they build like these cardboard dioramas, but they look pretty good. Like they're pop-up dioramas, so you just have to fold them up and everything. Oh, and all right. They make like really cool scenery. I've seen some like subway scenes, some alley scenes. That's dope. Uh, they did a. They just did one for like a turtle one. So if you want some Ninja Turtles, you can do like the sewer scene. Uh, yeah, they're really cool. They do some of those. I know some other um, people do actual uh, third parties do some diorama sets, like full actual. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ones, but those ones get a little bit more pricier. But yeah, if you want to be on the more budget friendlier <laughs> one, I would definitely go with those extreme sets. The cardboard like, ones are up. cool. Yeah, they used to do that in uh, old card games or board games and stuff. You used to have things like that. They would like fold out into squares and fold out into bigger things from little paper cardboard cuts because it was way cheaper than making it out of plastic and, right. or, and trying to store it in a box. So that's cool though. I think those are really good. Uh, I do think we're running down on time. I only Oops. wanted to mention one last thing before we left because I know it was in the title and that was I know uh, Baki Season 3 had come out on Netflix which is uh, nice. one of those fighting semi kind of it's not really like dragon ball z but i'd put it um yeah, I've i'd put it in like yeah i'd put it in old dragon ball z territory like nice. really old or dragon ball territory not dragon ball z as far as like style of uh narrative and then you know it's just it's got its own little violent style and stuff i, I like it i will say it's uh, compared to like the old animation for this from the 90s super way better <laughs> but I, I don't know, it's interesting to see it go from, like, uh, you know, way back in the day to jump way here, and they were like, we're just gonna, like, s s keep going. Because they literally, it's like, uh, they didn't restart the story or anything when they started in 2018, they just continued. They were just like, fuck it. Which I, I'm not critical, I just thought that was <laughs> fucking hilarious, because they were just like... Yeah, if you haven't seen this, go watch the old piece of shit ones. Or don't, we'll give you flashbacks. <laughs> like, I think there's one episode where it's like a straight flashback so you can just know who this character is. Nice. Well, I'll definitely have to watch, uh, check that out. And then, uh, it's pretty decent. Yeah, we'll have to see if we come up with some other things, I guess, on the next stream with some more things to come out for the spooky season. There should definitely be some more things coming. I know, I'll keep an eye out. I, I actually just made a little doc so I can uh, like write down whatever I find or save some links and trailers so I don't forget. Because I always see things and then I forget about them by the time we get here and I just forget to like write them down or... Post them on my Facebook and then I just go back later. And then yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the best way to go about it. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it unless you got anything else. Uh, I think that was it. Yeah. In that case, thanks everyone who came through and watched. I do know, probably not this week, we're trying to get um, some more of the like technical stuff worked out on the uh, stream crap, but uh, we might be moving either to Twitch or YouTube for our streaming runs just so we nice. can get more of our uh, social media linked up. It's just a lot easier to like video post and then comments from YouTube and share than it is from Facebook. Uh, at least for like Instagram, not Instagram, but other sites outside of like the Facebook family. Facebook makes it really easy to share inside and not as easy to share outside. <laughs> but yeah, thanks everybody for watching, and I guess we'll catch you next time on uh, Comic Convos. Have a good one. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.